So one of the last few things I had to do in order to unlock the Platinum Trophy in Mafia 1 Definitive Edition was to collect all of the various different collectibles out in the open world, which took me quite a considerable amount of time driving around and picking them all up one by one. And after finally getting them all and unlocking that trophy, I have come to the conclusion that collectible trophies totally suck balls. I mean, let's be honest here, people. No one here likes these sort of trophies and these sort of things in games, do they? I mean, you don't look at the back of the box and see a bullet point saying, full of pointless collectibles that will take you hours to find and think, oh my god, that's amazing. I can't wait to do that. No. For me, whenever I'm checking out a game's trophy list or I end up picking one up by mistake in game and I see the collectible counter, I usually just end up sighing and rolling my fucking eyes as I know that once I'm done with the campaign, I'm in for multiple hours of me just aimlessly wandering around trying to find them all as if I'm some punk kid trying to catch all of the fucking Pokemon. And while we're being honest, you never actually find them all naturally while playing through your own exploration either, do you? I mean, sure, some games put them in obvious places or make them easy to see, like the collectibles in Uncharted with the sparkle. But there's always, always that one bullshit collectible that is just so well hidden that no one, and I mean no one, would ever think to look there. And Mafia, oh my god, Mafia has a few of those, believe me, but it's not the first game. Remember how annoying it was to find all of those blast shards in the first Infamous game, which often resulted in you just running around, constantly pushing in the analogue stick to do that sonar thing so you could hopefully detect them? Or how about those fucking feathers in Assassin's Creed 2? Jesus Christ, they were annoying. Or the hidden packages in the GTA game, with some of them just being really fucking awkward and hard to get, especially when you drown if you fucking fall into the fucking water. Or what about the fucking Firefly pendants in the first Last of Us game? Some of those were quite hard to find. Especially the ones that they decided to put hanging in trees. I mean, fucking hell, I just could not see those at all. And there was no chance I was ever going to find those naturally by just playing through. I completed this several times before I went back and done the collectibles. And each time I would always run past these trees and not notice them. Hell, even when I was using IGN's video guide and I knew exactly where they were, when it came to me hitting them to knock them out of the tree in game, I still couldn't see the fuckers. Jesus Christ. Are you fucking kidding me? So in the end it just results in you using a collectible guide on YouTube or you end up sketching or printing out a makeshift map of the game's open world and you just crush each collectible off on that map as you go along, picking them up one by one, and I highly doubt anyone has ever really found any of, well, all of the collectibles in a game by themselves naturally. You pretty much just have to use a guide to find any type of collectible really, especially if you want to get all 100% of them. And that's exactly what I did in Mad Max for the 191 scavenging locations. I printed out the map on Microsoft Paint and I would cross them all off one by one. And I must have spent around five hours doing this over the course of a week. Just pit doing each area bit by bit, day by day, until eventually I got them all. Only to then realise that it actually glitched on me so I could only actually get on the counter 190 of 191, meaning as I was then locked out of the trophy associated to it, so all that time I spent doing that was for nothing and my game was now glitched. It's just one of the most bullshit things that can happen in a game, and if you gotta put all these collectibles in, at least make sure the fucking counters work right, so when fucking morons like me go and get them all, they at least get their fucking reward at the end of it all. Jesus. Collectibles are just one of the most tedious things you can do in a game, and for me that left a sour taste in my mouth when I looked back at Mafia 1, as after completing the story twice for the two difficulty related trophies, I really enjoyed the game, I loved the story and I thought it was great, but in order to unlock the Platinum, I had to spend another 5 hours going through some of the missions and exploring the giant empty open world in order to pick all of the collectibles up that I missed. 
And to rub salt into the wounds, if that wasn't enough for the game to just have one type of collectible to get. Oh no, Mafia is one of those games with several different types of collectibles for you to find. There was various different types of magazines for you to pick up, comic books, cigarette cards with character profiles on them, photos um, from postcards that you had to pick up, all sorts of little things like that you have to find through the missions and the open world in order to reach 100% completion, yet even after getting all of those, there was still another random 50 fox statues that I needed to find for the final collectible trophy in the game. And look, sure, I get it, someone spent a lot of time making those pretty pictures, the artwork for the cards, as well as the character models for the foxes, but really, in the end, what did it really add to the game? What did it really bring, other than just needlessly padding out the runtime by giving you just something, anything to just do? It's busy work, that's pretty much it. And to be honest, I think I would have rather the developers spent the time, money, the planning, the designing, making and implementing and even testing all that time spent working on these various collectibles into actually making actual missions or side content instead for me to enjoy as Mafia's free ride to be honest is mostly just made up of collectibles there really isn't much else to do within the hidden the um, open world other than just some hidden races but they aren't that great either to be honest so as you can imagine driving around the open world of New Haven just wasn't that much fun at all really and it felt like I took a job as a delivery driver to be honest going around picking up all these parcels and at that point I'd done everything else in the game I'd beaten it on the hardest difficulty and got all of the other trophies so there was just no way I was going to not bother getting the platinum now after I'd suffered through all of that annoying stuff like that fucking chapter 5 race Jesus Christ so at that point you're just sort of stuck you've kind of just gotta do it and get all these collectibles and that's when you kind of ask yourself who are these things even aimed at i mean if you want to add more story to your games then tell it via characters and missions you know extra story sides quests and things like that don't make me read a load of poxy journals or pick up a load of audio logs to hear about some side story that in the end doesn't really matter. I mean remember the Ish storyline in The Last of Us 1 wasn't even mentioned in Last of Us Part 2 so in the end it just didn't really matter, it was pointless to be honest. And that's not to say that collectibles and collectible trophies in games are always terrible because some games do actually do it right usually when they give you the trophies for just collecting a percentage of the total amount of collectibles so you might find that there's 100 in the game in total but you only have to collect 50 so that means you don't have to really worry about searching every nook and cranny for them and if they're missable or not and Control is a great example of this, as that is one of those games where you just have to get so many of them, but not all of them. And most of the collectibles are just on like tables in the offices or just on the floor out in the open. So they're quite easy to find as you're just naturally playing through it. Plus, you can always go back to every area of the building, so none of them are missable, which makes it a good collectible trophy. As they don't overstay their welcome and you're just likely to find enough of them for the trophy during your first natural playthrough. However, some games go way overboard in terms of the sheer amount of collectibles you need to pick up in the game and the amazing Spider-Man's comic book pages were some of the worst examples of this as there were literally hundreds of these fuckers to grab as you swung around New York. Now thankfully they are easy to spot for the most part as they glow a gold colour and they're usually just floating around in the air blowing in the wind or on top of the buildings so you could just grab them as you swung around the city but that doesn't excuse the sheer amount of them for you to get and it's fine at the beginning when you've still got hundreds of them to get as you'll often just bump into them all the time but when you're narrowing it down to the final 10 or so and you've got the entire city of New York to try and look for them in and they don't show up on the map or anything like that to allow you to easily grab them 
then those final ten of them uh, to get are going to be a right fucking pain in the ass, especially if they're not all clumped together and they're at opposite ends of the fucking city because you will be swinging around aimlessly just hoping, hoping that you catch a glimmer of that gold shine in the corner of your eye as you're swinging around or you see the grab comic book pop up come on screen as you just happen to point the camera at it and t uh, trust me that is just frustrating as hell when there's no fucking radar or anything in game to help you find where they are the ps4 version of spider-man fixed this and made all of the collectibles just easier to find because it pinpointed them for you Bioshock's Infinite, I'm pretty sure, had some of the worst collectibles to get, and I really remember hating picking these up, as they were missable, and I'm fairly certain they needed to be done in one playthrough, because if you missed one of those Voxophones, you had to just redo all of them again, it was really strict in its requirement, you had to pick them all up in a single playthrough, and that is just absolutely bullshit, that is just some sadistic shit. Why? Why can't I just pick them up across multiple playthroughs? Because that's just bullshit. That's just the devs giving you the middle finger and saying, look you sad cunt, we're going to make you do all this in one playthrough and if you miss just one, just one by maybe just you forgot where it was or you happened to trigger a story scene and you moved the game forwards and then you just couldn't go back to that area because it's just locked out, you just fucked and you have to do the whole thing again or hope that you've got a save file that you can go back to. They are just horrible collectible types those where you have to just do it all in a single run another one that i really hated was batman arkham knights riddler challenges and all those trophies that you had to get as they were just a nightmare as even though there weren't as many as say spider-man they often required you to solve puzzles or piss around doing something in order to just grab the thing so instead of just running up to it picking it up within a second or two you had this prolonged event every single time you went to go and get a collectible that just increased the amount of time it took you to gather them all and in the end i just said fuck it i'll leave them and i actually never got the platinum for Arkham Knight because of those Riddler challenges. It just wasn't worth my time. I just think as we move ahead into the next generation of consoles next month, we really should be leaving collectibles and collectible trophies and games behind, as they're just never really all that fun to collect, especially if you're trying to pick up all of them. For me, I would rather the developers actually make me some additional content to keep me busy that's actually fun you know some extra side missions some enemies to kill some weird challenges or whatever anything to just fill my time with fun stuff to do anything other than just aimlessly driving around picking up these random little collectibles that just don't offer me anything so developers please when making games for my awesome ps5 and beyond don't force me to pick up a load of collectibles in order to get a trophy which will go towards the platinum because I really, really don't want to do it. But ah, uh, who am I kidding? We all know I'm still going to go and do this monotonous thing to get that platinum trophy but I really, really don't want to anymore because it's just really boring and just not fun and it's always the last thing I remember in the game like this one in Mafia when you had to get this car onto this fucking roof in order to get this random ass comic book I mean who the fuck was on the roof reading the comic book and why the fuck did they leave it there and why the fuck does Tommy want to read these things anyway bullshit absolute bullshit collectibles and games are just bullshit thank you very much for watching I'll see you next time